believe it's Wednesday, can you? But I'm so thankful that God has given us a great day for this Wednesday. Possible storms this evening, but we're praising the Lord for the day he's given us because we want to celebrate him. Got men's Bible study at 10. We have, uh, and women are meeting too for prayer. Uh, then this evening at 5 o'clock family night supper, 545 adventure club, 6 o'clock prayer meeting, Bible study, handbell choir, and 7 o'clock choir practice. Busy, busy day. And I am Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church Dadeville inviting you to participate in all of these things. So come on out and join us. Right now, let's look at God's word uh, for our thought for the day. James chapter 4, picking up in verse 4. Not a not a fun place to start because remember, James has been talking about how we uh, uh, we have these uh, wars and fights within us and, and among us. They come from that desire to please ourselves, that me first mentality. Uh, he says we, we do everything we can to get what we want when we want. And that is our sin nature, isn't it? And even after we become believers, we, we battle that sin nature because we still want those things that we want. And James, is tells, t- James tells us, he says, you ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss. We ask for things from God, wanting it for ourselves, not for his glory and not for the good of others. And that's where we fall into trouble. In fact, it gets so bad that look at what he says in verse 4. He says, adulterers and adulteresses. Now, he's not talking about sexual immorality here. I mentioned this yesterday. He is talking about the fact that we have become so consumed with the things of the world that instead of worshiping him and praising him, we worship the things of the world. We glorify the things of the world and understand um, this is idolatry when we put anything before God. And God often refers to those who are idol worshipers as adulterers and adulteresses. Now, look at how he finishes verse 4. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Oh, listen, here is a tough statement that we've got to understand. So often we want to reach out and hold on to the things of this world when our hand should be extended to God. We ought to be holding on to him. Now, he's not talking about the fact that we shouldn't associate with people because we've been called to go into the world and make disciples. But our love must be for him, our our, our spirit must be focused on him. Our desires must be focused on him. When we find ourselves loving this world more than we love the Father, we have a problem. Now, here's some symptoms of that problem. When you say, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm just not ready for the rapture because I, I, just, I, I want to see my family grow up. You're loving the world more than you're loving God. I know that's hard, but it's true. When you find yourself saying, you know, I got a pretty good life here. I, I, I think I like living in this world. You got a problem because this is, world is not our home. Our home is in heaven and we need to be focused on heaven. Not, not so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good, but focused on heaven, looking forward to the day when, when Christ calls us home. Uh, I was visiting with a family yesterday who's, whose uh, father and husband is, is uh, very likely going to be going uh, to his eternal reward in the very near future. And uh, I mentioned to them that we spend so much time praying Christians out of heaven when there comes a time when we should be saying, Father, take him home, take him home, let him experience the glory and the joy of heaven. Because we're so selfish, so me first, so me centric that we forget that it really is all about this journey where one day we'll end up with the Father. And so listen to what he says. He says, whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I don't want to be an enemy of God, do you? I, I mean, I read through the Old Testament. I read through the New Testament, especially the book of Revelation, and I see what happens to the enemies of God. They're crushed. They're destroyed. They find that their eternity is in hell. And so the true believer is not focused on the world. We're focused on God because we want to be the friends of God. We want to to have God look at us and call us friend. Now, uh, finish this up in verse five. He says, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? He's talking about the Holy Spirit here. The Holy Spirit that, that dwells in believers yearns jealousy for our loyalty, yearns jealousy for our desire, yearns jealously for our love for the Father. God is a jealous God, and he wants his people to be so focused on him and committed to him that nothing else in this life matters. Does that describe you? Well, maybe not some days. Focus on him today. Make that your desire today. 
Commit yourself to him today and then do it again tomorrow. Be blessed. See you back here then.